Today we are talking about what's next in Gen AI adoption. You have heard it endlessly throughout this summer. AI is losing its hype, it's losing its luster. I have also hopefully explained a number of times why I think there is a massive, massive difference between the way that Wall Street prices AI companies and artificial intelligence in general. Seemingly no journalists are able to make this distinction, but here we are. Today though, instead of ragging on all of that, I'm going to focus on what might be coming next. Because there is no doubt that we are in a transitional moment in terms of how people think about AI adoption. Particularly in firms who have quietly been experimenting this whole time, there is, I think, a sense of a shift, or at least a desire for a shift. And interestingly, McKinsey really captured this in a recent survey. This came out on August 7th, and the blog post summing it up, they called Gen AI's Next Inflection Point, From Employee Experimentation to Organizational Transformation. This informs a huge amount about how we're thinking about AI at Superintelligent. And so today we're going to dig into some of these numbers and what I think the implications are. To set this up, I want to come back to a study which I frequently reference here on the show, which is the 2024 Work Trend Index from Microsoft and LinkedIn. This came from a survey of around 31,000 people across 31 countries. One of the really notable parts of this survey was the speed at which employees are adopting AI even though their bosses are getting hung up. The study found that 75% of knowledge workers were using AI, and among those, 46% had started in the last six months. While meanwhile, 79% of leaders thought that AI was critical to remain competitive, but 59% were worried about quantifying productivity, and 60% said that their company lacked a vision and a plan to implement AI. The net result was that of those 75% who are using AI, 78% were just doing it on their own, not telling their bosses about it, bringing their own personal uses of AI to the office. The net impact of this is that right now, all of the benefits of AI are accruing to individual employees, not to companies. In other words, when AI is invisible, it's great if employees are doing things much faster than they might otherwise, but unless they are proactively deciding to use that extra time to move farther or faster with their work for the company, the company isn't necessarily realizing any of that benefit. This has created a prerogative for enterprises to figure out how to scale individual employee benefit from AI to broad organizational benefit. And so this sets us up for this McKinsey survey. The kickoff line is, as many employees adopt generative AI at work, companies struggle to follow suit. To capture value from current momentum, businesses must transform their processes, structures, and approach to talent. So as you can see, sounds familiar. Now again, especially because we've got all these sort of articles like this one from The Economist, Artificial Intelligence is Losing Hype, it's important to counteract this with the results of these surveys. After nearly two years of debate, McKinsey writes, the verdict is in. Gen AI is here to stay and its business potential is massive. But as I said, employees are far ahead of their organizations in using Gen AI, and companies have been slow to adopt in ways that could realize Gen AI's trillion dollar opportunity. So let's talk about some of the study's findings. First of all, this study found even more usage than that Microsoft and LinkedIn survey. This had 91% of employees using generative AI split between 21% being heavy users and 70% being light users. All of those folks, as well as the non-users, anticipate that generative AI will positively impact their work experience. Of those who are using it the most, 98% say they believe it will positively impact their work experience. Among light users, 91%. And even among non-users, 80% believe that Gen AI will positively affect their work experience. In terms of what they think will be improved, communication, creativity, critical thinking and decision-making, and ability to collaborate all score highly. To take the light users as a benchmark, 81% of light users think that Gen AI will improve their communication, and 75% think it will improve their creativity. The biggest gap between light users and heavy users was in attitudes around critical thinking and decision making and the ability to collaborate. 65% of light users thought that Gen AI would positively impact their ability to collaborate, as opposed to 84% of heavy users. 84% of heavy users also thought that it would impact their ability to think critically and make decisions, while 67% of light users thought the same. In terms of this idea that organizations are lagging behind, McKinsey points out that only 13% of respondents' companies have implemented multiple use cases. Not surprisingly, the organizations that had implemented two or more use cases tended to have a higher concentration of those heavy users. Organizations that had multiple use cases, a group that McKinsey called early adopters, saw 49% of their employees as light users and 43% of their employees as heavy users. They write, the CIO of a global heavy industry company sees these trends at his own organization. Employees are experimenting with Gen AI through publicly available and embedded tools, which is increasing curiosity and encouraging greater openness to experimentation. Yet he notes that there's no easy-to-prove business case for employee-driven adoption and the piecemeal implementation of use cases. 
And that leads McKinsey to what they believe is the next inflection point, moving from individual experimentation to strategic value capture. So what are their suggestions for how organizations can make this transition? They argue that there are three key steps. The first is reinvent domains by translating vision into value. The second is reimagine talent and skilling by putting people at the center. And the third is reinforce changes through formal and informal mechanisms that ensure continuous adaptation. So basically, the word salad of reinvent domains by translating vision into value is that companies should take a domain-based approach. Basically, let units like product development, marketing, and customer service think holistically about solutions and implementations and new workflows that work for their domain. Effectively, thinking about Gen AI adoption at only the individual level is too small, but at the cross-organization level might be too big, whereas within a specific domain or department, that might be a better starting point. Now, when it comes to the second bucket, putting people at the center, the companies that are more adept at using AI right now, what McKinsey calls early adopters, also, quote, prioritize talent and the human side of Gen AI more than other companies. Two-thirds of them have a clear view of their talent gaps and strategy to close them, compared to just 25% of the organizations that are just experimenting with AI. McKinsey also writes that these early adopter firms focus heavily on upskilling and reskilling as a critical part of their talent strategies, as, quote, hiring alone isn't enough to close gaps and outsourcing can hinder strategic skills development. This is really, really important. Yes, new hiring processes are absolutely going to prioritize AI skills as part of it, but you're going to have to work with your existing workforce as well. Lastly, and this one is really interesting, 40% of early adopter organizations provide extensive support to encourage employee adoption. In other words, these firms are encouraging people to not keep their AI usage secret and instead share what they're learning. This is pretty much central to the way that superintelligent approaches unlocking organizational AI value. While nominally, we are a platform where people can learn how to use AI tools, in point of fact, the much more valuable aspect of it is getting people to share what they're using AI for. And that happens both between and within organizations. Our Super for Teams product, for example, is basically entirely focused on getting people to share with their colleagues the high-value AI use cases they're finding that could actually be driving value inside their organizations. Now, this last idea that you have to reinforce the changes to continue transforming is on the one hand obvious, but also even more important in AI than basically any other domain. The speed with which the technology is changing effectively demands that organizations need to build infrastructure that assumes change. McKinsey suggests that governance is a right part of this, and that, quote, a centralized model with a Gen AI dedicated center of excellence helps align AI vision with execution. A second part, they say, is treating the changes like a true transformation. That means defining its infrastructure roles and measurement criteria and ensuring accountability within business units. Ultimately, though, they say the big thing is mindset. For Gen AI, that means that leaders should visibly adopt generative AI in their own ways of working, that organizations should communicate the reasons behind implementing Gen AI, that there need to be comprehensive and ongoing training programs, and that companies should start to integrate AI goals into performance metrics and evaluation processes. So that is this study from the front lines. To reiterate why I think this is so important, is that as the headlines and the news outlets debate AI hype or not, every organization in the world, every enterprise, every company, every small business, is basically going through this process that McKinsey is describing. Employees are experimenting and iterating without being told to do so, in fact, sometimes in defiance of what they've been told, and organizations are now finally racing to catch up with them in order to actually translate the benefits that they see their employees getting to organization-level and business-level benefit as well. It is actually, despite these headlines, an incredibly exciting time when it comes to how this technology is finding its way into the workplace, and I hope you now have a better sense of that. That, however, is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.